Hey guys, gals and legionnaires, Rykon here, and welcome to Something of a Resurrection. Now, some of you might remember a while ago, I came up with the idea of doing a roleplay of this game, Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for me as I just couldn't get it to work as a roleplay game. Well, it is a role-playing game, but not in the way that I present my stories to you all. But, it's still such a fantastic game, and I think that there is still a really rich story that flows through it, just from trying to survive. So, here's hoping that this could work as a Let's Play for us. I think it's almost a Let's Relax, and I would call it a Let's Relax, other than the, the fact that, um, unfortunately, it isn't super relaxing, because in Cataclysm, there are just numerous 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 ways to die and hundreds of things that are out to kill you so <clears throat> with that said i'm not sure how long our poor character might survive but we are going to be going with noah hedges our original police officer from the trailer that we showed mm, towards the end of last year so without further ado here is Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Now we're playing on version 0.C, also known as Cooper. So it's just recently had this big overhaul done to it. And there's another really cool thing as well that I'll be able to show to some of you. Some of you who have may maybe seen the game before but haven't seen this, um, I'll be quite excited to show it. So I'll go in into what I'm talking about in greater detail a little bit later on. But first, for some of you who don't know what Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead is, it has seen numerous versions uh, throughout its days. It's a free game, and it has always been free. Um, it's about as indie as it can get. It's been developed by a huge number of people, um, and now is in the hands of Kevin Grenad. I, I though hope I'm close with that one. Um, who's doing a great job, but there is a really dedicated group and community behind the game as well. But the basic premise is... The world has gone to hell. And it's not just a zombie apocalypse here. It's, it, it's, it's full on cataclysm. We have meteors that have rained from the sky. Diseases have spread. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty much got every horrifically bad thing from every science fiction movie you can almost imagine in it. From blobs to triffids um, to jabberwockies. So... There is a whole heap of pain out there. And um, this is one of those notoriously hard games. I think it's in the same kind of same kind of frame as Dwarf Fortress. And to some of you, it might look quite familiar as well. We've got that top down, looking on from above. And it's all, you know, it takes place in turns. It's not a, it's not a real-time game. It is in a way, but the basic premise and idea is to collect resources while you can. And survive as long as you can. And I find that the story comes from that that effort to survive. Because it really truly is an effort. So I'm going to be taking us through from the very start. We're going to create a new world together. And then we're going to create Noah together. So we're going to start by hitting new game. And going into custom character. Rewind Rikon. Instead, we're actually going to go to our options first. I'm just going to show you what my basic options are at the moment. I've got my auto pickup turned on. Um, as you'll see when I'm playing, I like to use that every now and then when I need to. Um, but everything else is relatively default. There are only a few things. Circular distances I like to have on, um, even though it's quite a square game. I find having the circular view distance works for me. Um, but under interface you'll see that because well i'm a new zealander and we deal in celsius and kilometers and kgs unfortunately that's the format that i'm going to be running with for this so hopefully that doesn't cause too much confusion um and everything else should be relatively the same now i know there's a ton of options and it can seem quite overwhelming at first but a lot of these things you don't even need to worry about probably what's most important for all of you will be the graphics um, and the major changes that I've made in here is to get it to be 1920 by 1080. Well, almost. It's unfortunately a little bit, it's a little bit off, but you know, it's close enough. Um, you just set your terminal height and width to these sizes and that'll get you, that'll get you in the ballpark at least. 
And next up, this is what I was talking about before, this new little extra thing that I don't think a lot of people have seen yet in um, in Cataclysm, is this tile set by Chestol. Now tile sets are used to replace what is in the basic game just ASCII, so like Dwarf Fortress, this is an ASCII game, so it's just your what what you'd expect to see on your keyboard. So you know you've got at symbols and hashtags and and all of that is used to represent things on the game screen and having them in varying colours. And I really enjoy it. I actually quite enjoy having ASCII because it really does kind of make it like a book then, where you use your imagination to create the game world. And I find that sometimes with tile sets it can become a little bit harder to do that because a tile set kind of, uh, it kind of forces your imagination to go down one track. But Chest Hole has done some pretty incredible things with this um, tile set. He's managed to create a, a almost paper doll type effect where before what we used to have on your kind of, on your character's sprite, it would just be the same all the time and it would be the same for all the NPCs as well so all male NPCs would look the same all female NPCs would look the same but chest hole has managed to create a layering system where you can actually see what you're wearing as well so it's it, it's it's pretty incredible so um, at a first glance you might be able to tell exactly what an NPC has in their hands so I mean it can make a that can make a big difference to the gameplay um, and it's still kind of its early de development at the moment but I'm really, really enjoying it, and I've just done like a, qu a quick little test run, um, and I think it's fantastic. So we're going to be going with chest hole for this, um, and it should look a little bit different as well, which is nice. It's a, it's a, it's a different take on Cataclysm. Uh, and next up, everything should be relatively the same here. I haven't touched anything here underneath the skills, um, but will defaults. This is probably where things are going to, going to be a little bit different. So having a look under here, I might have to change some of these things again, but I'm just going to double check them. Um, all of this is on its default at the moment. I considered putting up the spawn rate of monsters, but I've kind of gone against it at the moment. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit further as I go on. Um, but Season level 30, that's a little bit higher than normal, minimum is 14. I like my seasons to be a little bit longer, just to kind of give that simulation of a lot of time passing between them. Um, static spawns are on by default, wandering spawns, I, I, this is a whole lot of jargon, um, unfortunately. Um, but static spawns is essentially where zombies spawn at the start of the game, and that's it. So if you just have this on, you can clear a town completely and get rid of all the monsters. And it's good. But I find sometimes it can it become it can become a little bit static. Um, but this wander spawn, this kind of um, I think this helps because it, it kind of emulates zombie hordes that come wandering through cities and towns, and they they kind of get generated by noise. So if I'm going around shooting my gun lots, it's going to attract hordes from further away, um, and I kind of like it. It's, it's it's a little bit buggy. I find that it kind of creates that extra sense of dread in it that you need. Um, now the NPCs, the NPCs can be a little bit buggy as well, but I've got both static and random NPCs on, so this means that NPCs will be generated at the start of the game, but also random NPCs will be generated during the game as well. Um, I like to have a few survivors kicking around. Um, I've got some long-term goals for Noah and the series, if if she survives long enough to kind of get them across but you know we'll see um, it's undetermined how long she'll survive for um and mutations by radiation is on by default okay so that's our options so next up we're going to go and generate our world which we can do over here in world or you can just go new game and create a custom character and there's another way to do it as well um so you can see there is a massive list of mods here now i haven't installed any of these these all come straight out the pack with the game. Um, so we're going to chuck a couple in there to make things interesting. So animatronic monsters, any of you that have played Five Nights at Freddy's will be quite familiar with these dudes. So we're going to chuck them in just for the hell of it. We're also going to get boats. We're not going to add dinosaurs. Um, we are going to put experimental Z-level buildings in. So essentially what that is is that that gives us multiple level buildings. So that's going to give us office towers and apartment buildings. And I haven't really found them to be buggy at all. So, we're going to go for them. Um, next up, Ice Coon's Weapon Pack. This is... it's massive. 
there is a ridiculous amount of weapons in this. It can make things a little bit harder because it just means that there are so many different types of ammunition, it's going to be hard to find the right gun for them to actually pair up. But it's somewhat more realistic for me, I think. So I think we're going to go with Ice Coon's weapon pack. Okay, next up, I haven't had too much time to play with this yet. This is new as of Cooper. More survival tools. Um, and I think we're going to go for it, actually. Um, these are things that you aren't going to start off with, which is good. I don't like any advantages at the start. But we're going to chuck them in there, because more is good, I find. Um, mundane zombies can make it so that, say, for example, if you wanted to make it more like The Walking Dead, you could just have regular zombies, because there, there are, there's a lot in terms of the monsters in here that, that are outside of just zombies, like I said before. There's pretty much everything that you'd ever want. Uh to come and try and kill you. Mythological weapons, you've got things like Mjolnir and a whole heap of things, probably Excalibur as well, that are scattered throughout the world. Um, they're quite hard to find, from what I hear, but you know what, we're going to leave them off. Um, necromancy. There's a part of me that feels like maybe we should chuck this on, because uh, there are zombie necromancers in the game. I'm going to put it on, we might not do anything with it, but you know, just in case, we're going to have it in there as well. Um, we don't want to disable anything. I want the full Cataclysm experience. You can see there's um, all kinds of crazy stuff as you kind of go along. Um, we're not going to prevent zombies. Um, we're going to go for the vehicle addition pack. That's just a whole heap of things that you can add onto your game. Um, the crafting system in this game is ridiculously deep. Um, I think you'll start to understand that. For anyone that hasn't seen this game before, once I start playing, you're really going to get a feel for... Well, for just how deep it is, because I tell you what, it is it is damn deep. Um, we are also going to go for slow zombies. So this halves the speed of zombies. The reason I'm doing this is because I am going for the wonder spawn. If I was just playing static, and I even bumped up the zombie spawn rate, I would probably still put this on. This is a very, very hard game. And with the wonder spawns on as well, you can end up just getting swamped by literally hundreds of zombies and it becomes i'm not going to say unfair but it's just it's it's almost not fun because of how how difficult it is um and i'm all about difficulty i like having really really hard to survive games because i think they're more fun but i think having this will well it'll be somewhat more realistic they shouldn't be the same speed as us in the first place they're decaying and falling apart, so we're going to go with them, um, because that, honestly, that Wanda Spawn, that really does, um, it really does bump up the number, the level, as you'll see, uh, when I open the map in game, sometimes you can see where the hordes are, and there can just be a ridiculous amount of them, so we're going to have that on, next we're going to go along to our world gen options, all of these should stay pretty much exactly the same, as we've already set them up in our world defaults and the options. So I think that is actually going to do it. So now we need to name the town. Gosh, this is going to be difficult. So if we just hit star, we will be able to um, randomize the name. So East Hazel Crest. It's all right. Apoka Counts Rougemont Rhine Felsmere. You know what? I kind of like Felsmere. Um, as you will see many fell things in this game. Uh, kind of somewhat reminds me of Leon as well. So we're going to go for that. Next up, it's going to chuck us into character creation. At the moment, it's just generating the, the world. It's just giving us a small little bug up the top hand corner of the screen. You see, I haven't actually moved my mouse the whole time. Generally, you never use the mouse in this game. It's all keyboard based. But it's still handy to have your mouse as you can use it to look around at things a little bit easier. So we're just going to hit spacebar. And there we go. Now, first thing when you're creating a character is you've got scenarios here. So there's a whole range of scenarios on the side here. Um, if you need a little bit more of a help starting off, some of these can be really good. As you can see, there's these little pluses next to here. That gives you more points when you're creating your character in the first place. So for us, the most obvious one to go with would be Assault and Precinct Z as um, you start off in a police station, but there's a part of me that thinks that Noah, I mean, even though this is a let's play, it's not going to be a let's role play, we're still going to try and role play Noah a little bit, just in terms of us starting off and and kind of the, some of the decisions that she's going to make. Um, so Noah was left behind, but 
I I kind of I kind of doubt that we should actually still be at the police station itself. Um, so there are a few other options that we can go for where we can still have um, we can still use Noah. So if we look at evacuee, that starts us off in an evacuation center, um, and that has professions all at the top. So we can go for any profession we like then. And I tell you, there is a massive amount of professions. Um, but you can see also here that there is a massive amount of um, scenarios for starting off as well. And some of these unlock professions that you don't have elsewhere. Um, so because it's kind of more of a, a standard cataclysm start, the evacuation center can be really helpful, starting off. So I'm in two minds of us having a really tough start by starting off in the city. <clears throat> you know what? We're going to make this a little bit harder on Noah. We are going to go with Assault and Precinct Z. I really think that we should almost get some bonus points for this. Um, because it is a, it's a hard start. Um, because you start off in a police station right smack bang in the middle of town. <clears throat> Or a city, uh, which could be even worse. So we're going to go with Assault and Precinct Z. And we're going to go along here. Um, you have your base stats, your strength, dexterity, intelligence, perception. Strength is very important, I find. Um, it's going to increase your carrying weight. Um, even if you're wanting to do archery, strength is still very important because you need strength to actually pull back the drawstring. So um, even if you're kind of going for more of a dexterity type build, you need to take that into account as well. Um, we're not actually going to play around with the stats at the moment. We're going to go through into our traits. Actually, I'm just going to go across the profession really quick. So you can see here that we've got a few different options. Bionic police officer and SWAT officer. But no, she's she's just a cop. So we're, we're going to leave her as a cop for now. Now, in terms of the, it, some of this might look familiar to anyone that has played Project Zomboid. So you've got your, you kind of got your, you kind of get your positive and negative character traits here. So we aren't going to try and min-max this, but we are going to go with some things that I think, I think, you know, I think Noah would, you know, potentially have. So just filtering through here, we are going to go for Heavy Sleeper. Going down further, Noah's a bit of a lightweight as well, can't quite hold the liquor. Hmm... Let's see. I usually would go for something like near sighted or even far sighted, a combination of both, um, which is really good for points, but um, I don't think of her being in the police force that she would be. So I am going to try and stick to some role playing rules here, even though you really do need everything you can to, uh, <laughs> to get going in this. Hmm. No, we don't want to. We don't want to go for any of those. Um, strong sense sounds like it might be not so important, but um, the zombies can track you by scent as well. So even at night, even if they can't see you, they can still find you um, because um, they'll be able to track you down. They can smell you, and some creatures can smell even better. Um, but we are going to go for Trigger Happy because while she is trained in the use of a, a handgun, um, she hasn't been trained in the use of automatic weapons. So. It might be, um, it might come natural to her to, to want to try and fire off as much as possible. Um, we're also going to go for Truth Teller, because um, while she is a police officer, um, I think that she is, she's an honest person, and I think that she would actually have quite a hard time lying to people. Um, so she's, she's not going to be um, a very good liar at all. Um, she'll have a very hard time lying, actually. So that can, that can obviously be a negative when we're dealing with NPCs, uh, as sometimes you do need to. Um, but, yeah, we're going to go for that. We're also going to go for, we're going to go for weak stomach. So, you can see at the top left-hand corner, we've got 13 points to work with. So, we're going to have a look under here as to what might be most useful for her. Um, there, there are quite a few here that only cost one point, and they can be really, really helpful. There's a part of me that wants to get animal empathy, but we'll, we'll just see as we, as we go. Um, first thing we're going to pick up though is Fast Reader, as it's only one point and, uh, you know, Noah, she's, she's read a few books in her time. Um, you know, she can flick through them quite quick when she's uh, in between shifts. Fleet Footed is going to make us really fast at running. I think she probably would be a good runner as well, but... Um, 
I might come back to it. I might come back to it. As I feel like I might instead want to change fleet footed for high adrenaline. When in a very dangerous situation, you may experience a temporary rush, which increases your speed strength significantly. I like the idea of this. I haven't actually played with this before. This is this is new for me. I've never seen this um, this benefit in here. And I think, you know, we might play around with it. We'll see if it has any major effect. Um, yeah, we're going to continue down through here. And I'm going to pick up Light Step. Um, we're going to be less likely to set off traps. And we're also going to make less noise as well. <coughs> Sorry. And we're also going to make less noise as well. As I kind of said before, noise can be a really big factor in this game, especially with the wandering herds. If you draw a herd to you, it's it's not good. Carrying on down, night vision is it's it's a must, especially if you're going to be trying to move through towns at night. Having that extra one space of sight, which you'll see once we actually get into the game, um can mean the difference between life and death because this way you'll see something before it sees you and that can be really 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 helpful and as it's only one point i'm going to be fine with taking it now everything else there is one more that i want to pick up and it's another expensive one and that's quick so with quick we get a 10 percent bonus to our action points it's expensive, but it can mean the difference between life and death. Just having that little bit of extra speed means that, you know, Noah might be able to get one more smack in there if she's fighting hand-to-hand -hand with something. I might take it off depending how many points we have left, as it is really important that you do put points into your stats as well. Because you can earn stats in the game, but generally that's through bionics and mutations, which I haven't even begun to talk about yet, and will probably be staying away from. Um, so, there are a few others here which I usually would like to get, but I'm probably not going to. If we need more points, we might have to go back here and look at getting something else negative. But at the moment, I think I'm okay with quick, night vision, high adrenaline, and fast reader. Mm, light step? Oh, I didn't even get it. Damn. Okay, so that only leaves us with four points, so... And that's less than ideal. So we're going to go back and see what we can do here. So strength, I would like... Gosh, <laughs> that's not good at all. I would like Noah to have at least 12 strength. As um, she's relatively fit, and I think that she would be quite strong. And strength is a big thing in this game as well. It takes into account what you can even just drag around. So if I wanted to, say, move a bookcase, I might not be able to if my strength isn't high enough. So it's definitely something to take into account. Um, this is this is a bit too low for these other ones. I'm okay with intelligence staying 8, but I'd like to have a dexterity and perception at at least 10. So that means that we somehow have to come up with 4 points from somewhere. Like I said, I don't like to min-max, but I think addictive personality is one that I usually go with. It gives us a few points. Um, and I think that Noah hasn't used a lot of substances in her time. So I think she wouldn't have experience with dealing with those addictions and also getting rid of them. So I think addictive personality could work quite well. So that's going to give us three points. So we're almost at that four. So we're going to have to pull up one more point from somewhere. We really don't want to go for bad knees or anything like that. Or clumsy. So we're going to have a flick through and just see what we have available to us. It is a little gamey. It is a little gamey, I'll, I'll, I'll admit that. But um, once you see how easy it is to die in this game, which hopefully you won't experience from me, like I'm, I'm hoping that um, I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna do pretty good here. Um, I'm just trying to see if I've actually got Lightweight selected. It's, it's For some reason, I'm having a really hard time seeing the difference. It is selected. But for some reason, I can't tell the difference between the white and the red there. Got a little bit colorblind for a second. Oh, there we go, it's back. Weird. Okay. So, while I'm going blind, we're also just going to have a look through here and see what else we can find. Hmm. Let's see, we can't get slow reader because we've already got fast reader. Um, we could just take, we could get rid of fast reader, um, and that would give us that one point, so we don't have to take another another negative here. Hmm. Well, she's not ugly. She, she's in between, you know. So let's see. Uh, strong scent, thin skinned. 
it's a tough one, this. It really is. I don't want to get rid of Fast Reader, because it can really help. I'll just get through books faster. Um, we've got Heavy Sleep already as well. Hmm. It is a tough decision. Yeah, we really don't want bad knees. And I want Night Vision as well, that's another 1.1, but I don't think we'll be getting rid of that. Um, we might possibly go for Junk Food Intolerance, just because, really, it, it can help. Obviously, there's a lot of junk food in the world, but... Eventually, that's just going to rot, and we're not going to be able to make new junk food. So I think we're going to be okay with taking junk food intolerance. She doesn't do too well with it. She's better with the fresh food or whole foods. Okay, so that's going to give us the points we need to get our dexterity and perception to 10 on each. Usually I would like to have strength higher than that. But alas, we have to work with the points that we are given. So I think that's going to do us for Noah. So we're now going to go into here. You can see that she already has some skills, which is good. She has skills in handguns and marksmanship. And I think that's about it. Um, so obviously if we had some more points available, we'd be able to put points into here. But these are all things that we can earn in-game. Some of them might be a little bit harder to start learning, like computers, for example. But um, those are things that we will be able to pick up. Um, realistically, she should have some points in driving. But we just don't have the points to give there. So um, obviously we'd have to be very careful when we were driving. Maybe she didn't um, drive the squad car too much. Maybe she was more of the uh, passenger. Okay, so as you can see here, now we're still a male. So we're going to hit the at symbol. And we're going to change that. There we are. That'll do it. And we're going to type in her name. So Noah. Hedges. Nidges, not any inches. Hedges. Officer Hedges. So we can see that we're a cop, and not all the traits will be listed there, but they but they are there. And before we jump in, I'm going to hit exclamation mark, and we're just going to save a preset of Noah, just in case anything happens within the first few seconds of this. Then we will be able to quickly start again, because unfortunately sometimes the starts can be quite punishing, um, and there can be no way out. So without further ado, we're going to jump into the game. But, I'm very sorry my friends, that's going to do us for this episode. And this has been episode zero of Noah's Tale. Thanks for joining me, and stay tuned.